Hey, Nelson Alcoholic Addict. That's not my real name. That is a fake name that I came up with to use for a sober newsletter that you are currently listening to. Uh, A few years ago, I got to know a new guy uh, in recovery, and he was a big Green Bay Packers fan. I lived in New York City at the time, so, you know, you didn't see a lot of Packers fans. It was Jets and Giants mostly. Um, He was a young guy, probably 25 years old, 26, something like that. He's new to recovery. Uh, I'll call him Hank. That's the fake name I use for other people. That is not this guy's real name. Um, but Hank was Hank was hustling. He did 90 meetings in 90 days. He started on the steps. He did not. He didn't let up. He just kept kept going. He made phone calls constantly. Uh, he was going for it, and it was a beautiful thing to see. Uh, I like to sometimes. Uh, I'm like a NASCAR driver. I like to draft off those people. You know, let. Let his energy pull me along a little bit, you know, just follow right behind. Um, And it was great. It was great to see. I love when that happens. And it happens a lot in the rooms if you stick around. So one night in January of that year, the Packers had a big playoff game. And it was a great game. It was back and forth. um, And it went down to, came down to the last few minutes. And it was pretty late at night. And I started to text Hank. And then I decided against it, and then I reconsidered, and then I reconsidered again, and and ultimately I decided I did text him, and he texted me right back, and we had this like long exchange down the stretch of the game, and the the Packers won. So he was so happy, and his joy was my joy. It was great. And I love those moments outside the rooms where you, you see sober people succeed for the first time without drugs and alcohol dogging them every single minute of every single day. And, you know, as much as I like to say that I got sober to carry the message of recovery and do service and help the newcomer and all these noble things, dude, I I have to admit, I need to see my recovery show up uh, in joyous stuff outside of meetings too, you know? Sometimes that's seeing my kids get a great report card or my wife accomplish a life goal, um... But other times, you know, it's just enjoying a football game or a movie or a sandwich or (laughs) an entire package of Oreo cookies or donuts. Like, I I never try to diminish those things as small things because they're not. You know, small things used to make me drink. You know, small, petty things used to drive me to drink and do drugs. And that wrecked my entire life and the lives of everybody around me. So... I'm damn sure going to enjoy little things like sports and TV shows and whatever else I can come up with that might be fun. I'm going to enjoy those things. I didn't think much of that text exchange with the guy uh, celebrating the Packers game until like a a week or so later, I was at a meeting and the guy shared at the meeting and he started out, (laughs) he started out a little wobbly. He said, you know, how grateful he was toward his higher power that the Packers had won their playoff game. And I started to groan a little bit because I'm just not sure that <laughs> that our higher powers are up there really duking it out uh, to figure out who should win the football game and respond to our prayers that way. So, But anyway, uh, maybe they are. Who knows? Uh, what do I know? Um, but he clarified quickly what he actually meant. And he said he he wasn't grateful that his favorite team had won and that God had granted him a, uh, a playoff, an NFL playoff win. That's not what he was saying. He was saying... He was grateful that he had been sitting in the first apartment he'd ever paid the rent on time for, sitting there in this apartment, eating takeout food. He didn't have to put on a maxed out credit card. And he's sitting there and he's watching his first sober football game. And he freaking loved every second of it. But then he loved it even more because his phone, this is all him sharing, because his phone started to buzz around halftime and it didn't stop buzzing for two hours. It was one new recovery friend after another, one after the other, me included, checking in on him, cheering him on, celebrating with him. Um, and, and he said it was a spiritual experience. And it wasn't, you know, we think of spiritual experiences sometimes as like the clouds parting and a lightning bolt from God blasting down and hitting us. And it wasn't like that for him, he said. But it was close because he said that moment reinforced for him that he was taking the right path with his life, that in six months of sobriety, he had built a network of people that were so invested in him that it was late at night and they thought of him um, over and over again and and hit him up to to celebrate a football game. And 
He said he felt like he was just, it just hit him hard that, that um, he was part of a sober army that would support him through big things and small things, good things, bad things, everything in between. And as he was sharing, it really, it brought a tear to my eye. I definitely identify with that. Um, and I thought of it the other day because I had an almost identical situation on a Saturday night with a new guy whose favorite team was playing in a big sports event. And I watched the entire game, even though I don't particularly like the sport or the team. Uh, but I wanted to be there with my friend in spirit anyway. And either support him or console him. I knew the game. I knew he cared about it. So the game went late into the night. And I again (laughs) hesitated to text him. Even though I knew he was up. I knew he was sitting there biting his nails. Um, So, But I ultimately, I did. I reached out. And we proceeded to text back and forth. As his team, (laughs) they had like this remarkable comeback. Got the game into overtime. And then won in overtime. It was freaking awesome. Um, He said something to me later that was similar to that Packers fan from from a long time ago that that night he'd been bombarded by a bunch of people who he knows really well despite not knowing their last names you know it's a it's an anonymous anonymous program most of us participate in um, but we might not know you but we know you that's the phrase I love that phrase so that exchange it again it warmed my heart and it warmed it warmed his heart too you know so I wanted to throw that out there today for the main purpose of just uh, encouraging everybody to maybe send that extra text, you know? Maybe you don't need to. Sure, maybe you don't need to. Maybe you're like me and you still like to just isolate a little bit. Just once in a while, ah, you know, just maybe I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I always catch myself saying, oh, I'll just, I'll, you know what, I'll just call him tomorrow. Or I'll say something, you know, I'll, I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll grab him at the next meeting I see him at, and I'll say something to him then. Maybe you're old school. You don't even like to text. You know, I know I prefer to just talk on the phone, um, but it, just a good reminder, I think you can't go wrong with an encouraging text or three or five. Um, and, hey, you could you could get extra credit here. You could text the guy and call him the next day and meet him at a meeting too. Like, you could do all of those things. We're not... <laughs> There's no rule against being overly supportive, I think, in recovery. So, hey, thanks for letting me share.